So knowing the upside gain is important in any real estate investment, yes guys? But also the downside risk is equally as serious as well. So when it comes to downside risk, we want to share with you all one principle that we have discussed and concluded in more simple layman term, right? As we're going to explore more technical details throughout the day to summarize it right now, right? Which is called the approach of using demand. So demand as well for both sides. So the difference about a lagger and a leader, right? Is that they observe and they see different kind of demand, right? If you are having a peripheral or perspective of looking at a wrong demand, you have wrong data point, and then you give you wrong outcome or wrong purchase as well. Because we're gonna catch this wave, right? One demand is actually real demand. But the other demand, right, if you are ostrich, is actually this thing called, called what guys? This one, this. Thank you. Sentiment demand. So sentiment demand is something whereby, wow, a lot of people seems to be queuing up. Uh. Recently, there's a new launch, which Ivan will be talking about later on during his residential segment as well. Um, a lot of people buy. So very sentiment demand uh, is driven by the investors demand a lot of people go and buy. But is it really a good property or not? That is to be deciphered. The opposite of that is actually real demand, which we're going to talk about. An example of a sentiment demand that we see right now is there's a rise of investment in the Johor area. Anybody have heard about the wave? Anybody have the caught wind of news? Anyone? Right, there's any news like this, right? So, Ivan, what is the perspective of news where they talk about bullish when it comes to instant Iskandar, Malaysia property market, and people are now rushing in to buy Johor before it's uh, too late? Uh? Yeah, so I mean, when we look at the whole Johor uh, situation, right, there is like sentimental demand or like hype, right? Talking about like maybe there's going to be strong interest from MNC going in. But the thing is this, I mean, uh, if I, I mean, actually, I have uh, operations in JB in the Johor area, and it is very hard to find talent. Mm. And the reason is, right, if the talent is strong, they will either go to KL or go to Singapore to work. And it is not really, like, not interesting for them to stay in the whole JB area itself. So in this sense, right, as companies want to progress in the whole Johor area, right, it is difficult because it's hard to find talent. More importantly, new selling is a very generalized saying that oh, US trade war, right, like, shifting demand to this area but this is a big area and it's just not just Iskandar so I would say that there might be more spillover to KL mm. there might be more spillover to Singapore than to Johor not saying Johor can't invest but saying that you have to watch with a more cautionary perspective when you start to use news and people starting to share news article as their main anchor source of knowledge when it comes to investment or potential as well highly subjective right and something that we use real demand is for you to understand this. One of the core function of real estate and why is it a powerful asset is because it is income generating. Yes, guys? So you buy a property, there is a utility to it. Someone can say you can collect money, right? Unlike gold and silver bar, right? So there's a strength to it. So the entire real estate market, right? You strip down all kinds of speculation, prediction, uh, grow, uh, booming and all this funny stuff, luxury real estate, right? It's driven by pure real demand of occupancy. Does it make sense? So once if you can study and understand occupancy in a deep level, right? Then it adds as a very strong safety net when it comes to investment as well. Yep.